Good TV together. It's so good to be joining you wherever you may be joining us from. Uh, welcome. We pray that you would be blessed, you'd be encouraged, you'd be inspired, maybe challenged a little bit today, Fergus. <laughs> and uh, we are excited, aren't we, with this new season here at God TV? It's a really fun season. And you know, Ward started at the beginning of the year this understanding of running a yes. race. Yes. You know, running a race is hard, but maybe the great thing is that as the God TV family, we get to do it together. Yeah. You know, Claire and I, we've been chatting on this couch or these couches for <laughs> many a moon, and we literally live a hundred yards apart. Hmm. And one of the things that we've committed to is the Scar family and there's the Worth family, is, is that we would do more things together. We would literally encourage one another, spend time with one another, hmm. let the kiddies run around and tear the place apart together, <laughs> but actually do things that would allow us to do this together, running a race. I think so. And I think the really interesting thing when we went traveling together before Christmas um, was this idea of, I think we, we've understandably become quite dispersed during yeah, what yeah. we all went through in lockdown. And, and, and now when you look back, it's like, it's crazy to think what we actually went through and navigated all together. But I think what we all recognise is missing relationship, yeah, yeah. friendship, truly yeah. doing life together with people who will cheer you on, mm -hmm. who will who maybe be like, hey, do you know what? I see that in you and, and I want to call you out on stuff. So, yeah, running this race, this journey together is a beautiful thing. We missed out for a really long time and I think we have to be intentional about doing this. Too long. God TV family, we want to get a better understanding of what it is to run our race together, mm. to be a God TV family. And what does it really mean when we take the time to do this together before the Father? Here's an example of the God TV family around the world sharing what it means to run our race. Running the race to me as a Christian is about perseverance. It's about trusting God through every season. Come hell, come high water, come the good times, come the bad times. God is able to keep you through it all. It means being prayerful and being in the word. Jesus modeled a life of prayer. And if, if Jesus is modeling it, then we need to be doing the same. And we need to be involved in deeply involved in God's Word, to be reading it, to be meditating on it, because we need to know what He says to us. We need to know His heart for us. We go through many trials in life, but we have to continue running the race for Jesus Christ, moved by faith, believe the unseen, knowing that Jesus Christ is always with you. So run the race. I believe that this journey of faith is not a competition about who will finish first or who will be the best, but it's actually a journey of submission. Who will surrender to God's will for their life and accomplish all that God has ordained for them in this earth. And I believe this is where we find the definition of how we can run our ways and finish well. You know, those are so encouraging, Claire. Mm. I think we've got our next set of guests. They, I, was, I, was, I was encouraged <laughs> listening to these guys. I was like, they should be on here, come on. So wherever you are around the world, the opportunity that we have to run this yeah. race together. In fact, as you can see, it's the first time I've done this actually, that we've changed our <laughs> titles to God TV Together, but it's almost like it's actually a sort of dare I say it, a utility title. Mm. Because we've always stood together, we're gonna run together, we're gonna worship together. Yeah. We are certainly gonna pray together. We're gonna stand together, we're gonna give and be generous together. Hopefully, at one point in our future, we're gonna travel together. We're gonna get sent together, but we are going to be together as a God TV family. Because mm. we do have a race. We don't just get to sit it out and to be be, well, sort of disqualified. No. We're all in it. No, and I think you can easily disqualify yourself, can't you? But I think when you've got a community around you that are cheering you on, are like, no, 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 not on my watch. Come on, you've got, you've got gifts. You've got uh, the Holy Spirit living inside you. So, and and that's the same for all of our God TV family. You know, we all have the Holy Spirit living inside us if we belong to Jesus and we have accepted Him as Lord and Savior. So, never disqualify yourself out of your own race. And and I love what the first lady had said perseverance yes you know when we run this race we run with i love that how she said hell or high water and you know 
Maybe some of you guys feel like at the moment you are in hell or maybe hell and high water. But just knowing that actually not only do you have a family here at God TV that are together that you can we can pray with you that actually you can feed yourself, you can equip yourself, you can you can be responsible for your own walk with Jesus, your own discipleship. And we are going to hear from Joyce Mayer right now. And Joyce is one of my favourites. I had her on this morning. I was on the cross trainer doing my thing, listening to Joyce, being encouraged. Um, so we're going to hear a little bit more from her around, around running this race, about being together as the people of God and just trusting that Jesus is Lord in every season, hell or high water. So here's Joyce. My gosh, if you knew how much hope there is for you. If you just knew what's in your future, if you just don't give up. If you just don't quit. If you just keep on keeping on. And one more day you get in the Word. And one more day you spend time with God. And one more day you confess the Word of God. Settle one thing today with your enemy. Let him know you are never going to give up. I wish I could explain to you how hard it was to get from where I was to where I am. And how many years of my life I spent doing it wrong to learn these things that I am now able to share with you. And I'm just telling you, you don't have to be against yourself. You don't have to live under condemnation. You don't have to wonder what's wrong with you because you can't do everything right. You don't have to compare yourself with anybody else. You just believe the word, hang out with Jesus, keep it up, 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 keep it up. And every day you don't quit, you get a little more deeply rooted in him. You know what the Bible says in Psalm 1? The man who meditates on the word, remember, we're chewing the word, day and night, he becomes like a tree planted by the waters whose roots go down deep in the ground. And get this, in a whole year of drought, he does not cease bearing fruit. That means you can have a whole year full of trouble, 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 trouble. And you can keep acting like Jesus. Because you've got your roots firmly and deeply planted in him. So here's kind of the way it goes. When you're born again, this is you, by the way. <laughs> Jesus comes to live in you. <laughs> He's in you. Now, with Jesus comes a seed of everything that he is. A seed. You don't get it as a full-grown plant. You get it as a seed. And that's why the Bible calls the Word the water of the Word. <laughs> Come on, you're going to get something here. So what does a seed need? It needs two things, water and sunshine. <laughs> so what do you need? The Word and Jesus, the Word and Jesus, the Word and Jesus. You need the water of the Word and the Son, Jesus, the water of the Word and the Son, Jesus. And then pretty soon, that seed starts to have little rootlets going down this way. If you could see what happens to a seed, you bury it in the ground, and then after a while, the pressure and the heat from the ground causes the outer hull to break open, and then little roots go down in the ground it looks like nothing's happening. Are you out there? How many years have you spent in Jesus thinking nothing is happening? I'm not changing, nothing's happening. 
But that's not true. The little roots are going down. You don't see anything on the top yet, but they're going down. And you know what? If you don't get impatient and go dig that seed up to see what's going on, pretty soon, Oh, we thank God for the ministry of Joyce Meyer mm. every day on God TV. In fact, twice a day, morning and evening. She comes into our homes and comes into our lives and brings such truth. Mm -hmm. Remember that mm -hmm. seed goes down for six months. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Leave it be and let it grow. You know, Claire, when my wife and I were living in the States many, many years ago, Joyce Meyer came to our church and she called forward our pastors for prayer. Mm -hmm. now, you didn't do that in a big old service. And she called them forward and she spoke a word over them. And it's so, it's so in tune with mm -hmm. what, everything that we've been saying about don't give up. She literally declared over them. Now, they, they built a pioneer church. Nobody would lent them any money. They would walked by faith. They would had setback after setback. And she literally declared over them, those days of hardship are over. Mm. It will never be that hard again. Wow. And the whole church wept mm. not just for our wonderful and beloved pastor yeah in fact if you want to know who i am go go, go and talk to my, my late pastor but but to see what the lord had done in and through our pastors and then in and through that congregation mm. you know it is about what our pastor used to call about stickability yeah it's about perseverance, perseverance it's about amen. again and again and again and show up and keep it up and keep it up and keep it up yeah and i wonder if in fact even as we do this running together and standing together and praying together when in fact as the god tv family the key element is just take another step yes one day one day one more day one more step and you know i've been talking to our uh, our team at church as well about I've really had on my heart lately, like, you need to know the word of God. Because, like, that, that seed that Joyce was talking about, you need the water and the sun. Well, the water is the word of God. That is how, and it, it says in the Bible so many times, doesn't it, you know, daily renewal of your mind. So sometimes, even when you've had a really bad day, it's still a new day, a new time, a new season for God to do the thing that he wants to do in you. And we just need to renew our minds daily. Have your discipleship. Sort it out. If you haven't got your own personal discipleship, where you have some time every day with Jesus, like every day with Jesus, um, it matters and it makes a difference. And one of the things that I was talking to our team about is, is knowing the word. And actually there's three things that are linked to that. So uh, at first it becomes um, discipline. Yes. You just do it out of just discipline. You know, like, it's like you go to the doctor, take these pills, you will get better. Like Boom. God's like, just read my word. It's like medicine to you. So at first it feels like discipline. It then becomes, it becomes slightly more second nature, but still duty. Like yeah. I still need yes. to do it. But actually it then leads to delight. Jesus. You know, so, so discipline, duty, delight, and it will become a delight. It will become joy to you. It will be like, I cannot wait to have my time with Jesus because I know what God is going to do in this time with me. Personal discipleship. Yes. That is like, and for me, I think that is my heart for this year. To, so not only for me, but also my team, staff, sure. encouraging friends, all this thing. I don't ever want to be, you know, there's a scripture that talks about, you know, um, that I never knew you. Ugh. You know, we cast out demons in your name. We healed the sick in didn't your name. We, we did, we you know, we. we did all these things, God. But he's like, I never knew Jesus. you. Jesus. And that puts the fear of God into me more than anything else. And I just believe and feel for you as well. It's for all of us. You have to know Jesus intimately, Amen. personally, for Amen. you, you have to, like, that is what will sustain you. That is what will breathe life into you. That is what will heal and restore yes. your soul. That yes. is what Jesus wants more than any yes. works, yes. Deeds, gifts, capability. He's not, he is interested, but 
the heart state is what he cares about more than any of the things that you could ever give him. So I want to encourage you like I've encouraged myself and our team, um, you know, just get into the word, ask the Holy Spirit, what is it that I should be using? Is it an, is it an app? Is it a, a daily reading? What is it? And, and ask the Holy Spirit to help you on that journey. So you, you start in discipline. You go through duty but it becomes delight to Jesus. you that his word would be like honey Jesus. on our lips and we pray that for you in Jesus name oh this is so so good God TV family I would like to bring you to London with us we were there a couple of weeks ago talking to Tiffany Bueller who runs David's tent yeah we gotta go to David's tent if you can Watch this extraordinary testimony of how exactly what Claire has talked about has manifest in Tiffany's life along with her family in the midst of the most unimaginable tragedy and pain. Watch this and Claire and I'll be right back. Tiffany, you have a wonderful testimony, you have a wonderful family, but the family, it's not been easy and you have faced tragedy and difficulty in a way that it's not obvious to know. Mm -hmm. for, for those of us in the God TV family, I think many of us have been through dark and difficult trials. Mm -hmm. Would you share some of that story and how the Lord has ministered to you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, about almost nearly seven years ago this March, my eldest daughter was hit by a car as she was walking off of the bus from school. She was 14 years old and she, um, she was hit at 30 miles an hour, sustained a significant head injury. And she went through four months of rehab at King's College Hospital, and she was in a coma. All kinds of craziness happened and changed our life that day. Um, but, and it's been a journey, it's been a difficult journey. But the thing is, is that we knew from the outset, we knew who Jesus was, Amen. we always knew who he was. So when Amen. we entered the hospital and we entered the the scene of the accident and we entered the days that followed. We knew that we knew that we knew that he was with us, that he didn't leave us, he didn't forsake us, and that he had a plan and a purpose for her life. And even today I'm talking about um, this, this aspect of keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus and how he gives us perfect peace in the midst of any storm and any trial when we keep our eyes fixed on him. And for us, it was, you know, we just knew him so much, probably because of this dynamic of being so immersed in his presence and so immersed in this intimate space through all of the years that we had cultivated David's tent, that it was really a lifestyle for us. So we had no question that whatever it was that he had for us, it mm. would be good and it would be well and all manner of things would be well. When you, when you share this with others, mm. A lot of us have been through trials, unexpected trials, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the thing that hits us from the side. Yeah. How do you minister to fellow sufferers? Mm. What, what do you say to us when we've had the car crash moment? Mm. What do you do? Because I think it's taken far too many of us out. We've forgotten the goodness yeah. of God. Yeah, you're right. I think what I would strongly encourage people always is that first, Jesus understands when he went to Lazarus's grave and everyone was weeping, he wept first before he actually did the miracle. He knew he was going to do a miracle, but he wept. He stayed with them in their grief. And I, I think that a lot of us are conditioned in our faith to rise victoriously. And yes. that is true, we should. But we also have to remember to grieve the loss and that the Lord is with us. There is a precious fellowship of suffering that nothing, that absolutely nothing can match. Amen. And when we choose to embrace the King of Kings, the one who suffered for us and now suffers with us, mm -hmm. then we can journey through that place with beauty mm -hmm. coming out from the ashes. And so I just always encourage people to let the, let the Lord sit with us in pain. Amen but also to know and trust that he will push us through to the other side. There is a resurrection that comes. There always is a resurrection that comes. And I think that that's the thing, even for us, you know, just with our, with our daughter, we knew that she would be well. Yes. The diagnosis or the prognosis um, was that she was the closest thing to a vegetable and that she would probably not walk or talk. She would have to have help in school. 
seven years on from, from that journey, Hannah is graduating um, with her bachelor's degree from Cal State San Marcos. She walks, she talks, she works, she sings, she dreams. She, she's kept her eyes fixed on Jesus, as have we. And there, it's been a road. It's mm. been a good seven-year road, mm. and her re recovery has been long. Mm. But there's a resurrection that has now come. But Jesus allowed us to grieve. He allowed us to feel the pain. He allowed us to understand him and know him in, our, in that suffering. I love that. There is a resurrection to come. We have that knowledge and we have that hope in Jesus. You know, we saw him navigate the cross, no. do what he did, and yet overcome death, overcome sickness, to be able to walk through that with us. So if you are in that season, we want to pray with you. We want to say to you, there will be a resurrection to whatever it is that you are going through. There will be, there is hope and hope has a name and love has a name and faith has a name and his name is Jesus. And he is with you right now, wherever you are, literally sat with you, weeping with you, mourning with you, grieving with you. And we're gonna pray, Fergus and I are gonna pray for you. Um, and I just have that real sense, like Jeez. it doesn't matter when you've maybe watched this program or where you are in the world or what you have done or what you have gone through. Jesus knows you. He knows the in and outs of yourself that you have maybe never revealed to anyone in the world. And he wants to say, I love you and I see you and I feel your pain Jeez. and I see what you need, but I'm here with you in the midst of darkness. But I also will be with you in paradise and I will be Jesus. with you when you receive this resurrection, whatever that looks like, financial, health, relationships, any of these things. So we're just going to pray for you now and we're just going to ask the Holy Spirit to mm. come in his power and by his grace and just say, Father, whatever it is that people who are watching right now need, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we pray that you would provide that resurrection. Jeez. That, Father, maybe it won't be instant. Maybe it's not going to be straight away. Maybe it's going to be seven years' time. Mm. But, Father, that, that people would know that you are with them in this journey. Jesus. You're not ahead of us, Father. You're not behind us. You are right beside us. Mm. And Father, as you know, the blessing says, you know, you go before us and you do go behind us and all around us. But Father, I just feel like in this moment that people need to know that Jesus, you just sat with them right now, Jeez. holding their hand and saying, it's going to be OK because I am with you Jeez. and I am good and I am faithful. Jesus. And you will see the goodness of God in your life. You will see that promised land. You will see health and hope and healing, you will see restoration. You will see me come through because I am able to do immeasurably more than even that you would hope or dream of. So Jesus, we ask Holy Spirit that you would come and meet with us now in your precious name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 God TV family, if we can bless you, mm. if we can encourage you, if we can pray for you today, then please do call the number that you see on the screen. We have call center teams throughout the world mm. or go to our website, god.tv forward slash prayer. Mm. You know, Claire, there's a story that you can't yet tell on air that you were telling me before <laughs> about how there was a hole in your life and ministry. Mm. It was an O-shaped hole and how the Lord has come through and ministered to you. Yeah. Without telling, because I know you can't, not yet, but we will. <laughs> What's that done for your faith, knowing that he's with you during this time of transition and change? I think it makes you realise, doesn't it? Well, sometimes you've got to put your money where your mouth is, right? So I think in leadership especially, there are times when I say things from the front and I almost have to have that check in being like, you know, you've said this, but well, you've got to walk this out because you can't be. I, I am I, I am one of those kind of people that is like, you know, I've got to you've got to put your money where your mouth is and you've got to be prepared to stand up and be accountable and say, Do you know what? I might preach this from the front and I might teach this here at God TV and we talk about it, but I've got to live this out in my life. 
and almost be accountable to that. Yeah. Don't be someone who says yeah. one thing and does another thing. But in that, sometimes there comes the fear of being like, oh my goodness, like I've just done a huge prayer or I've just said a huge statement and I'm like, oh God, give me strength, give me hope, give me, just walk with me in yes. this. But also, sometimes I think you can fear something yeah. or fear the outcome or fear what something will do but actually God is like, you know, I am greater than any fear that you could possibly have. And we were leading worship last night and, and I got this real sense that I'm a bit of a worrier, as you probably all know, if you've been watching this for any amount of time, I am a worrier. I, I, I have suffered with anxiety for a really long time. And I was watching, I came home from worship practice and we were watching, um, there was some worship on, on YouTube and I just had it on. And uh, there was this lady that was saying, let your worship be louder than your worry. Oh, that's good. And I was like, you know, you have this moment yeah. where you're like, oh, and even sometimes when I'm leading worship, I can be like, God, I know you are good, but I'm still really worried about this. I know you are good. I know you are good. Um, but actually God just comes through in so many different ways, doesn't he? And, and I just feel again, this is maybe a word for you. If you are in that season of worry, anxiety, feeling that you're disqualified, feeling that, you, you know, where is God in this? Get your Bible open, get some worship music on and start praising God because, you know, fear has to flee in the name of Jesus. Fear cannot just be consuming you when actually you fix your eyes on Jesus. It just, it doesn't, it's almost like oil and water. It doesn't, it's not, it's not together. It has to separate. So I just want to encourage you as well. Let your worry be a lot quieter than your worship. In fact, let's swap it around. Let your worship be louder than your worry. Get some music on, get praising Jesus for all he has done. Remember the goodness of God it's as good. well. You know, I think sometimes I've got to do that. Remember when God came through all these times and then we sometimes have a wobble and it's like, oh Jesus, what are you going to do? And it's like, do you remember the last time? And do you remember the time before and the time before and that other person and the time before? Remind yourself of the goodness of God. So he does, he, he inhabits the praise of his people our producer has just said that in my ear and you guys need to hear that as well he inhabits the praises of people so let your worship be louder than your worry that's so good god tv family i've been ministered to on this program our production team in our ears have i've been, been ministered, ministered to, to. we all have, have. God TV team around the world, if we can stand with you, encourage you, bless you, hug you, do whatever it takes, we would love to bless you. We are the God TV Together yeah. family. Yeah. But from Claire and myself, and indeed all of us that host these programs, we pray that you are blessed in this walk. Until next time on God TV Together, God bless you and shalom. Yeah.